What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Sunday show here on the Shoki channel. Sorry, I'm getting notifications for some reason right as the channel goes. <laughs> What's up, guys? A nice Sunday evening here in the good old state of Texas. I see we've got people already here in the chat. Id Monster, Roadkill Raker, me, <laughs> Unboxing Art. What's up? Rodimus13, how you doing? Gonna be late for getting dinner. How dare you? The Marvin Show. Hello, I don't know you. Hi. And, of course, uh, the person I can't really uh, read their name, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> but, guys, it's been a little bit. Reese Bosworth, hey, what's going on? See, I said it a little bit later in the day, so I could probably catch some of my people who are uh, having morning time on the other side of the world, hopefully. So, uh, today we're going to be going over your comments from my discussion video the other day, because... That's what we're here for. And actually, after this goes live, I will be posting the Nerdcast that that, video, that discussion actually came up in. So, yay, have a new new uh, discussion video, or I'm sorry, a new Nerdcast one-on-one -on -one with Joey Ganoda, uh, which uh, had problems. Uh, not the actual Nerdcast, but editing it. Uh, if you were following my Facebook, you saw that I was having problems with uh, crashing. There was some kind of weird glitch with a very particular uh, clip I was using, and it's the one I usually use for my commercial breaks. And even though I moved the actual clip around the video, it was leaving the audio in place. And then when I went to delete the excess versions, every single time I deleted it, it would crash. No clue what caused that, but I remedied the fact by moving the clip from its original location to somewhere else and re-importing it. Worked fine. Outputted it. It's also available on SoundCloud. If you don't feel like sitting and watching YouTube for three hours, you can pull it up on SoundCloud. The link will be in the video itself, along with all the links to Joey's stuff. So, uh, Hero Duo the Comedian. Hello. Laser Pants. Yay, Laser Pants. What's going on? Marvin Show loves my videos. Thank you. I appreciate that. I like my videos. Also, I'm drinking a beer. Because I can, and I'm a grown up. Why not? And that's something you guys might notice. The microphone is in front of me. I figured a better way to get uh, audio. So yay for that. So what's going on with you guys? It's been a busy, busy week on my side. Um, editing, getting back to reviewing, which has been interesting. Now, I've gotten some reviews done in the past month during Double October, but now actually getting back to knocking out reviews of other things, actually editing videos and getting them out, because once again, I have to go back to a normal schedule instead of having an entire month already planned out for a release. So that's going to be a bit of a change. And I haven't built anything in a few weeks, uh, so I need to get back on that this week. Uh, sadly, tomorrow, guys, no uh, Master Grade Monday at all. Uh, so we'll just take a break on that because I don't have anything filmed as of yet to work on, and I won't have time the rest of the night to actually get that out. So sorry. Don't going to start out November without a Master Grade Monday. I apologize. And uh, the Double October playlist has been fully updated for anybody who wants to just go and binge all of Double October from this year. So, yay. Playing with your new Ronin Wolverine from Mezco. Watching the live stream. Sweet. Ronins. Oi, Shoki, did you get a lot of sleep time because you look seriously tired and almost all of your vids? I'm always tired, dude. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and uh, circles under my eyes, that's always been a thing. That just... That's how I look. Thanks. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, did get lots of sleep last night, even though we were up late. Actually, uh, we filmed another Nerdcast last night with my buddy Eric. You guys have seen him on the channel. Uh, so i got to edit that this week. Planning out three, maybe four new Nerdcasts coming up sometime soon. Like I said, I'm trying to get those out on nearly a weekly basis on top of everything else. But uh, no, having the time change uh, last night, getting an extra hour of sleep was good. So we finally got out of bed at about 9 a.m., which is about 10 a.m., or would have been the week before. So I guess that works, I guess. Um, so we slept in about, but we went to bed late last night. Uh, uh, Eric and them didn't leave until fairly late. But that's just, that's what happens when you start recording at like 9 o'clock. You end up going late. So it is what it is. As for reviews this week, um, I'm going back to the normal schedule of uh, Tuesday and Thursday uh, non-Gundam reviews. i got plenty of stuff lined up. Yay. 
Uh, there will be, a, I don't have to think about it. No, there will not be an unboxing. There will be Whip Wednesday. The first Whip Wednesday will be this Wednesday. I have to edit that tomorrow. And then uh, so Friday, I almost said Sunday. I don't know why. Uh, Friday will be a brand new build from a month ago that you guys haven't seen yet. So, but like I said, what's new with you guys? What's going on your end of the world? I, I talk about my stuff all the time. It is what it is. So I gotta clear out all of these notifications. Mm. And do things look a little more yellow to you guys, or is it just me? Maybe I need to adjust my my white balance a little bit on this side. Is that a little bit better? I think that's a little bit better. Do I look less tired in this lighting? <laughs> Uh, jeez. All right. So, Ronan Wolverine from Mezco. That's actually a pretty good one. Sorry. Anthony, what's up? I'll give it a couple minutes for more people to show up. Oh, last week I did get something new in. Um, be coming up on videos. It's a new DX9 transformer. You guys should know by now. I do like my little DX9 uh, Warren Pocket. Transformer, so I'm looking forward to that video. I've had a lot of fun playing with it the last few days. Um, I also have, like I mentioned before, uh, repro label videos coming up fairly soon. I've got to get back with uh, David uh, this week at some point, so I can get my Gundam air marker or air hold on, Gundam marker airbrush kit back from him, so I can finish that review, so I can get that out. Because I know a lot of you guys have been wondering about it and, you know, probably want to see my take on it and how it works. Because that's really what we're going for is the how it works situation. But I've got a lot more Star Wars Black Series, a lot more Marvel Legends, all those things. A few new things from Jack's Pacific to go over and a ton of other toys and things like that. And I've begun doing new unboxings for other things which is fun, and if you guys are following my Instagram or my Facebook, you've seen teasers for things that are definitely coming up sometime soon, but you guys are excited about that, aren't you? Aren't you? Nice. Uh, Halloween. Uh, Halloween was absolutely uneventful around here because it was storming very badly on Halloween. Uh, we had a hell of a cold front come through riding the wet front that was already here, so it was flooding, tornadoes, massive storms, all the things. For Halloween. So Halloween itself was absolutely uneventful here. Um, but we ate through all of our Halloween candy ourselves and now we feel like fat pigs. So there's that. Have started exercising. Uh, if you guys have watched the uh, thing with uh, Deluxe Baldwin, uh, talking about actually getting out there and walking and stuff. Uh, we've, we've started walking at least a couple times a week now. Uh, Saturdays at work are now ridiculously physical for me so it's basically almost like a four-hour crossfit class uh so hopefully i'm gonna i'm gonna weigh myself next week and see if i've lost any weight but we are like i said doing doing a couple days of walking even though i worked my ass off saturday i'm not nearly as sore as i was last week on the live stream uh because that was rough that was a really really rough rough week so what did you guys do for halloween any cool costumes out there Anything? Nothing? Uh, we, you know, because we went to the Renaissance uh, last weekend, and we did not get to uh, dress up this year. We want to next year, so we're going to plan on that. Um, so we're going to start working on costumes and stuff like that. Actually, I'm going to start work on a prop, kind of, that I could possibly use for that. Uh, plus, I actually I need to do a video this week of my haul from the Renaissance. You know, usually I do that. I usually show off the stuff I've picked up. And uh, much like the last couple of years, I picked up some new artwork from one of my favorite artists. So I'll be showing that off along with the other cool thing I picked up. So, yay for that. Just going to wait here. Oh, by the way, also, for Whip Wednesdays, if you have anything you are working on right now, or anything you've worked on very recently and you want to show off your progress. Not the actual finished thing, the progress. Show us what you're working on. By all means, send it to the email or to the Shoki Facebook in a, in a communication. You know, send it as a message or attach photos and a description and stuff like that uh, of what you're working on, what you may have planned, stuff like that. And then down the line, we can do updates. But that's the whole idea for Whip Wednesdays. And now that we're out of Double October, 
I can get back on those. And like I said, I've got a few from other people already from when I first asked for them, but I've gotten none since then. So send them in. Email is always in the description down below. Actually, I need to fix that. I can't do it right now, but I will do it later. So anyways, um, if you guys don't have anything else going on right now, I'm just watching the chat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start going into the comments and your answers from my discussion question the other day. So, of course, the question came up. Um, it was proposed to me from Joey Ganoda, as you guys will see. I'm not going to give you my answer. You guys will have to watch for that. Uh, so, let's just go over what you said. So, the question was, what are two, three ideas that you have that Bandai could improve on in their hobby side or even maybe their other stuff that they do so you guys had answers so let's go over them uh i already didn't i put out a video about mg dynamis so i'll get back to that in a little bit hero hero okay so just real quick so uh deluxe baldwin said man glad everything went uh good towards your job you know and good updates yay thanks for that matt okay so, uh, Vully Vool said, I'd like Bandai to improve on joints and hands on 1-100 kits, especially the joints on the RE 1-100 kits. Um, I feel you on that. Uh, that was actually one of the things that, spoilers, uh, Joey wanted to see as an improvement was improving the way the hands work. And obviously, if you built any number of kits from Bandai, um, especially in the Master Grade category, you can go anywhere from the two-piece sandwich hands for holding weapons or even the, the fixed pose hand to the fully articulated hands with a barely uh, available nub to hold weapons. And those things can suck. We've been there. Uh, consistency on, on those things would be great to have. Uh, I'm not even going to address what you just said. That's what's going to happen there. Hola. Hola, Mr. Eric. Also doing fitness challenges. Eee, good for that. Pull-ups suck. I can't do pull-ups, so I feel you. All right. Um, Neos Convoy. Hello. Uh, how about Bandai improving the net code for their online games like Gundam vs. and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2? That'd be great. I know nothing about that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I know those are obviously games they've built. So if they have problems with the net codes, well, sure, why not? That was totally not something we even covered in our discussion. We we're talking more of the hobby side and the production side and stuff like that. So I didn't even think about Bandai Namco on, on that end, on the electronic end. Now, I've seen uh, just playing Gundam versus. Uh, there were definitely some issues when I was over at David's playing with that, but I think that was because he didn't download everything. He didn't update the game properly before starting it, so I think that had a big effect on it. Sorry, getting messages. But either way, it's a good idea. If, it, if, it were, if it's something that you have a problem with it, by all means, expound on that. Okay, Steel Angel John, longtime supporter and, and uh, subscriber. So glad to see glad to see things are uh, on the up and up, I my mean, man. It's good news. Bandai could stand to undergate some more. I think I I or like they could get away from better sprue mechanics. Get away with better sprue mechanics. Anyone else think that? Uh, a little bit more undergating would be great. Um, there's some cases where I don't like undergating. Uh, in fact, the thing I was just working on the other night it was actually undergated, but then when I clip off the gate it actually ended up taking off some of the sharp edge that it was trying to avoid um with the undergates but it wasn't bandai that was actually kotobukiya but it was just the concept of undergating a lot of times especially play to kits you're going to get hopefully hopefully going to get undergating and that'd be great but uh seeing a bit more would be great especially on uh anything blue or navy colored undergating would be absolutely appreciated hide the nubs better and I think they just have to really plan around that, obviously, with designing sprues that way. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that absolutely is a thing that we could totally work on uh, on their end. Uh, but I don't think enough model companies really do it, though. So I, it just it comes down to what they would be actually willing to do for us. 
Okie dokie. Oh, that's a big thing. Okay. Uh, Rodimus13 said, You and I discussed this once before, but I always think that it's strange when Bandai slash Sunrise put out a Gundam anime, and then when the kits come out, they're either missing colors or missing important details. You think that that... With the entire process being done in-house, as it were, they can make sure their kits match the animation. I mean, they're meant to, even if it meant going to their anime guys and be like, hey, you could you not have these colors like that? I think money grows on trees. We don't have the budget for that kind of color separation. I don't care what you think looks cool. I'm looking at you, Barbatos Lupus Rex, where every version does not have the yellow claws naturally. Uh, you are right on getting some better color separation, and you know that they've definitely been working on that on a lot of things. We're even getting HGs with good color separation. So, But one thing you might un- misunderstand there is the kits are always done before the anime, for the most part. Uh, they're almost never done post, with the exception of P-Bandai re-releases and uh, color mods and things like that. Uh, the kits are always designed first. A lot of time, very similarly to Transformers and things like that, where the toys and everything come out, they're designed and then usually, you know, based off of some of the things with the movie, but then the toys and everything are usually foremost. They come out before the thing. Uh, IBO was the most apparent one so far that I think, where it was clearly done before the anime was, because you've got things that come up in the HG kits and even some of the 1-100 kits, that they never do on screen, or you never ever see. Like some of the variants of Barbatos, some of the weapons that Barbatos had. Some of those were never ever seen, ever. Uh, Case in point, the mobile armor, when it came with the uh, katana-looking sword that Barbatos was using against it on the box art and stuff like that. So that idea and that part of the story may have been in the design process but was cut ultimately out of the anime so it, there's that i mean yeah adding new color separation actually molding more parts in color everybody wants that but of course you are going to pay more to get those things higher quality higher cost injecting more plastics maybe even different types of plastics like they do with the new rgs where you actually are getting multiple types of plastics injected over each other on those runners, and that's why newer RGs are even more uh, uh, expensive. Uh, Hiro, I would love to see the most recent P-Bandai Gum Plus, the statewide releases since Bandai bought out Bluefin, and not have to pay secondary market for most of them. Yes. I think everybody wants that. That's, that is linked into one of my points uh, that I bring up. So, like I said, uh, when when uh, this is over, go watch the interview with Joey Ganoda, and when this question comes up, you will obviously see my answers. I don't want to spoil all that. So, but uh, P Bandai is definitely, definitely a thing that needs to be fixed. All right. So, uh, Nate Simmons, what's up, buddy? Glad to see you back on your feet, my brother. Bandai can definitely do better on distribution of items, whether it's Gundam, DBZ, or Voltron. For example, Solo and Voltron was very poorly distributed and then skyrocketed in price. If they would reissue these items, collectors will get the items they really want. Yes, distribution is definitely a hard thing, especially on the higher-end things, such as um, figure arts, the heavier Tomashi Nation things, Solo Chagokin, anything like that. They're very limited when they come out, especially over here, because, of course, this is a secondary market for that. So usually the cost is much higher. Like the uh, Solo Chagokin Megazord that I have was like, what, 300 some odd dollars? But then the Solo Chagokin Dragon Zord is like 170 And it's almost as much stuff. So... I mean, it, that got way more distribution. But in the case of the uh, the SOC Voltron, yes, he's very right on the poor distribution there. Bandai seemed to have some bad distribution problems in the last year or so. But Hasbro also has some really bad distribution problems, especially here in the U.S. Uh, with shortages of stuff like that. Um, and also that causing shortages, people buying them out as quick as they can and then turning around and selling it on the next the the next market eBay, Amazon, all those things for way more money than they paid for it. We all know that's bullshit and it should all stop. So but yeah, no, uh, not not even just the kits because for his for his side where Nate doesn't really do gunpla, uh just seeing the toys and stuff like that, collectibles especially all getting better distribution would be great. 
uh, actually, the um, Legacy uh, Power Rangers figures really suffered from poor distribution. Uh, different markets getting it at way different times. Prices skyrocketing of the people who just got it first. And then now a lot of those things are just sitting on the shelves or actually getting total re-releases and bailouts through GameStop and online retailers and stuff like that. So um, it, it's just it's a change that definitely needs to come about. That's, that's no argument at all. Uh, but distribution needs to get better. And that's also another... Another point to cover in my discussion. And by all means, anybody in the chat, uh, if you have other ideas you want to answer, by all means, throw it out there. I'm trying to keep up best I can. Speaking of shortages, I still can't find G1. Really? Um, they're all over the shelf here. The re-release is sitting... Where did I put him? I don't even know. I put him here somewhere. Oh, yeah, he's up there. Um... Uh, if you need one, we can. We maybe you could uh, work something out. I'll grab you one and send it to you. We'll see. But uh, there was a definite shortage on the first run of those. Now they're all just sitting on the shelves. In fact, the Walmart I went to the other day uh, had like a dozen Hot Rods, a dozen uh, Star Screams, like six uh, Devastators. So they're there. But obviously your area is not is having a shortage, so sorry about that. I'm just going to talk directly into the microphone like this. Is that okay with you guys? Okay. Build and relax. Somebody I've seen coming up more recently. Uh, it would be nice if overseas can order PV and I from its website so we don't end up paying at least double. Yes, that comes down to distribution. Also, for some reason, he particularly points out the no-grade 1 to 100 tier in and... Uh, HG, GN, O, 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 O. I don't know exactly what he's, which one he's referring to there. Yes, more star scream. You need more. Yes, Eric, you need more star screams in your life. Okay. Hector, Hector Garzas. Yeah, Garzas. Sorry, I, I was reading that as Garaz. My bad. All right. I would like to see more MGs. More specifically, I feel like they ignored Build Fighters as a whole. I would love to have seen an MG Build Burning. Amazing Red Warrior was great, but for Build Burning, it was a protagonist suit. I'm still sour about that Bandai didn't provide an MG, probably due to the fact they didn't have an old frame to reuse for it. Another thing, I feel that they have, a mar they have to market better. I don't know when and how to look up what upcoming kits are on the way. Look up what upcoming kits are on the way. Sorry. It may just be my ignorance, but I don't know when kits are on the way. Okay. Uh, for that, follow things like Gundam Kits Collection or Gunpla Network or anything like that because they're always posting the new upcoming kits. Any release data, any prototype images, stuff like that. So if you follow any websites that definitely do that, and maybe if they're tied into retailers as well, um, like Canadian Gundam is with uh, Gundam Network because they are you know together. Uh, that's the best way to keep up with your news and stuff like that. Or if you need to follow some of the YouTube guys who definitely always do that. Uh, Gundam info is probably a good place to look at that. Although their, uh, release dates and stuff are more based in Japan, not necessarily the, uh, U S but if you need to follow any of those things, by all means do that. I'm glad I'm not the only one having Hasbro problems. I have yet to see optimal Optimus leader class or wave two deluxe Dinobots. Oh, that's weird to not see the other Dinobots. Uh, but no, the uh, Optimal Optimus has not hit shelves, as far as I know. It's online only, from what I've seen, and has only just hit in the last month or so. The only, people who got it early were, of course, everybody overseas. Uh, Europe, for sure, or at least the UK, gets Transformers and things like that at least a month before they hit here. And that's why you see people like Ben's Collectibles and a few other guys who are there get it first. Or if you see a U.S. reviewer reviewing it way before everybody else, they ordered it from overseas to get it earlier than everybody else. So that's a thing. It just is what it is. But no, that Optimal Optimus should have been out months ago. And the fact that the SDCC version was easier to get a hold of than the actual regular retail version is kind of ridiculous. Because uh, why would they do that? 
How about new MGs not based on old MG engineering? I'm sure they're doing that. There's, there's, there are newer MGs that do have newer technology in them. But if they can milk a de- a good engineering design like the old 2.0 frame is actually a very good frame, superior to the 3.0 in a lot of aspects, which is why I, things I have over here are definitely better than you know the 3.0 grandpa. Uh, the, I mean, there's a reason they keep using that frame. It is actually very good. Um, and what they could do that would be nice is a kind of core frame like they do with the RGs. So you're starting out with the same basis and you're slapping new stuff on it. Same thing that Frame Arms does with their architects. Uh, just basically starting off with the same basic frame and altering it. And, you know, I think, what is it, the... Uh, G system is that what it's called? Those new those new G system kits or something like that. The MGs, on the other hand, um, I don't know. They they're gonna milk some of those things forever, and I guess it's okay. But we would also have to get new MG designs, kind of like the other dude was just talking about. We're we're doing MGs based on the same things repeatedly. Look how many MG gems have come out in the last year and a half. This year alone, MG jinxes. Uh, what uh, four at least and they're all based on the same thing mind you those aren't the the uh, 2.0 frames or the jinx frames but it is what it is or at least the uh, I feel like I've had this discussion before this is weird um, actually I think I have had this discussion on a, off a, on a Gundam podcast yeah, but uh, thinking that like say the new MG Dynamis which I am excited for by all means is going to have the same core as Exia because all four of the original Gundams, with the exception of uh, Kyrios, which uh, just had the minor differences for flight type, um, or for flight mode, I should say, those are all based off the same core as Exia. So the fact that it's taking them this long to do it is actually the embarrassing part. But I think Dynamis will be awesome. The details on the prototype look ridiculous in comparison to even Exia. So maybe we'll get an Exia 2.0 down the road. I don't know. Obviously, I'll buy any of those things. And if it's out by Double October next year, it'll definitely be featured. Um, I just there's no date on it at all, so there's no when. You know, now it's like there's there's less of an if. Now we're just waiting on a win. So I guess that's a good thing. Uh, hold on. Uh, Michael Waterfield in with the double O sequel in the next few years. I'm hoping they get missed sets from the movie rather than have to order janky Chinese conversion kits. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I'm still not betting on there really being a double O sequel so much as it being a stage show and things like that. So I'm not even worried about that. When did the FTCC become easier? I held back many transformers are going to play to try and get that thing. Prime was well, my childhood here on prime. I just want to get it. It was easier in the fact that people have it. The SDCC version was way more available. It may have cost an arm and a leg, even on online retailers, but that has been available since Comic-Con ended. And the regular version has not up until very, very recently. In fact, I just saw on Friday that it was available at TF Source and I think the Chosen Prime, but I'm not so sure... Of course, you could pre-order these things, but I don't remember if it's available on Big Bad Toy Store as of yet. Um, so you just gotta you gotta get on those online retailers. Um, as for finding it in store, God knows. Uh, check your targets easier. So the Hasbro store closely on release and refresh it was out of stock. B, I got my order and I missed out. Oh, okay. Well, that sucks. Um, hey, Wilson, what's up? I want to see kits based on mobile suits in f- in the fake movie that Saji Crossroad watches at the beginning of Awakening or Trailblazer. I don't remember the Gundams at the beginning of that. I mean, I don't remember what they look like, I should say. I thought they were somewhat close, though. But that would act- that's actually very funny. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen anybody who who's done that, so... Uh, those would have to be, like, extreme, like, P-Bandai releases because it's so obscure... You know, something that's on screen for, you know, however, not even a minute. Uh, actually, the pilots were on screen way longer than the Gundams, if I remember correctly. But, you know, the 
the Gundams themselves were they were seen. You know, there was footage. Well, as whatever they could get footage. Uh, sorry, the tartness of that beer is uh making my mouth water. I'm trying not to spit everywhere. Give me a second. I got to answer this message right quick. Okay. Um, another request for more MGs from Akimi Ito. And Build and Relax says they appreciate my hard work for Double October. I appreciate that. Because it was a lot of work. As I explained in that video. Okay. Reese, your answer. I think Bandai should make it easier to get Gundam kits in the UK and Europe as you either end up paying normal price and waiting four weeks or paying nearly double the price for a kit to arrive in a week. True. Uh, that's if the kit is even in stock at all. So, uh, I honestly, I feel your pain a little bit on that one because at least locally, one of the only places to buy Gunpla in store was, of course, Hobbytown Houston. And there has been a major shortage for them. I know the reason for the shortage. And um, it's not on Bluefin or anything like that. It's a different problem entirely. But they're finally actually getting stuff in. So I've actually had to be... I've had to buy any kits that I've wanted recently. Which has not been many, obviously. If you guys know that I was short on money. Uh, I had to buy them all online. And of course, you got to wait three, three, three days to a week. In fact, I have a box coming tomorrow. That it just remembered I have to leave and go pick that up before. I don't want I don't like waiting when I know it's coming through uh through UPS, I can go get it, so I don't bother waiting. So look forward to an end of kitchen with Shoki tomorrow. Uh, I want to see more RGs of e EW OVA Gundam to be released already. <sighs> yeah. Um I I I feel like they're gonna just kind of sleep on those a little bit just because they like we're pushing so many things um at least we're getting the rg Tolgis 2 and obviously the three after that of course p bandai because why wouldn't they be the mgs were i know because i bought them as they're right here um which i still haven't built any of the Tolgis rgs which kind of sucks um, I did contemplate buying the RG Sazabi, so everybody keeps asking about RG Sazabi. I was on the verge of buying it this go around, but I decided to buy a couple extra kits instead. You know, use use the money slightly wiser. Um, but I think in the future I will be getting that getting that kit. And I know it's you didn't get it when it came out. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't have money when it came out. What do you want me to do? So we'll have to wait on that one. Okay. And then com comics or cosmic derp gaming. I think those people disliking your videos are just assholes. You're one of the best reviewers out there. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Thank you. I appreciate that. Carl, you actually made it in an actual live stream because I'm not about to end it right now. So that's good. Um, Yeah, the... And I get it, not everybody likes me. And I know I've probably made some enemies in the last couple of years with people who really disagreed with my opinion or were causing problems on my channel and I had to boot them. Um, and obviously people were really, really angry at me with the F91 review because that has almost more dislikes than likes. Um, but uh, it, what didn't make sense to me is that every single video from Double October, not, there's not a single one, that doesn't have at least two to three dislikes. A couple of them have probably a couple more, but it it seems like it doesn't matter what content I'm doing, there'll be dislikes. Unless you go back further, in which case there aren't. So it seems like there are people who are just out to be dicks. But like I said, I agree, I get that not everybody's going to like my content. Not everybody likes double O. That's the thing. Uh, but... Hitting the dislike button is more than just like, hey, I hit that dislike button. Now I'm going to make fun. Uh, it does hurt things. It, it 
So in the case of the like button actually helping YouTube understand that uh, people actually like my videos and want to uh, see more of them, which does tell YouTube to start promoting my videos more, put them in more suggested videos, stuff like that, the dislikes go the opposite way. Okay, sorry, there's things here. I have a feeling that the next RGW will be dead side the hell and, s and scared the rest are going to be more like their Master Grid counterparts, probably. Carl, uh, have you seen Awesome Toys poll about Build Divers? A flop. No? I mean, I've seen one review that was talking about Build Divers and if it was a flop or not. Um, I still haven't actually done that. <laughs> I haven't done my own video for whether or not Build Divers was a flop or my, my uh, series wrap-up on that. I just got too busy with Double October. Um, but I don't think it was. I really don't. Um, I didn't get everything I wanted out of it, but I also... So, some of it, so much of it was predictable that, you know, you, you, I wasn't too let down by anything, really. The, the worst offense, I think, that Build Divers was guilty of was not enough screen time for things that were touted very heavily as model kits. But that also comes down to, hello, model kits being done before the series. Also, the release schedule on it made no sense because in the beginning it was like, hey, this kit's going to pop up. Here, or this, yeah, this kit, this Gundam is going to pop up in the series. Here's your kit to correspond to it. IBO was actually very good about timing the kit releases with when it appeared in the show. So, you know, within a week or so of an appearance of a new Gundam or mobile suit, you got the kit released. Build Diver's release schedule made no sense because it didn't even line up with the actual action of the show. The fact that uh, uh, No Name Gundam, or No Name Astray, rather, was released so late compared to when it showed up in the show was ridiculous. So, I mean, I think if you're looking at it from the Gunpla perspective, Build Divers had problems. If you're looking at it as just the show and not the direct tie-in to the kits and the toys, um, it, it, it wasn't terrible by any means. It, I would probably go back and see if Beginning G was worth a damn. I haven't actually watched it, but to me it seems like that was a little more similar to Build Divers than Build Fighters. And... I know there's plenty of people out there who really, really disliked Build Fighters. Try. I loved it. I loved Try. I loved the regular Build Fighters. Divers was more limited than those were, but they were still good in my opinion. I thought the idea of what they did with Sarah was actually pretty cool. I think it needed to be explored a little bit more than it was. The ending and everything was feeling a little bit rushed, but I liked that they extended the final battles over the course of, like, what, three three episodes at least, instead of wrapping it all up in one, which would have really shortchanged the series. Um, uh, high resolution line is interesting, too expensive for me. Same thing. Uh, the high resolution Wing Zero looks really cool. I've seen people building it um, at uh, build days and such, uh, but I've got no need to have it. It looks cool, and I like the fact that it has bird mode, uh, but... Um, no, <laughs> it's it's not worth it to me. It's it's like the titanium finish ones that are way more expensive than the originals. Those things, nope, not even going to bother. Oh, and by the way, for anybody who might ask if I'm going to pick up the new Sinanji Stein, yes, I'm going to get the narrative version of Sinanji Stein. It looks awesome, and as far as I can tell, non-P Bandai, and it's going to be good. Because <laughs> I've been wanting a regular Sinanji Stein forever, and it's always hard to grab in time. So I'll definitely pick it up. The price is like super fair for it. So I'm down. Divers and Try are not great. Well, that's your opinion. I have a different opinion. It's fine. I like them. You don't have to. If you like it, you win. That's just that's that's the ultimate thing. I was like, okay. If it's not for me, it's you. Hey, unboxing art came back. Where you been, bitch? He actually picked me up some toys earlier. <laughs> it's like like we just we had just finished breakfast and he calls. He's like, "Hey, I'm at GameStop. Do you need these things?" 
I was like, yes. So he's been he's been stockpiling stockpiling figures to send to me. I need to send something to him sometime soon. Actually, I have the uh, I have the Walgreens. Uh, I keep wanting to say Titans Return. It's not. It's a Power of the Primes Rekgar, which is just a a remold recolor of um, what's his face from Combiner Wars. So whoop de doo. But hey, it's going to be a cool thing to review. I need more new. I need more official Transformers to look at for right now. But you know, I've 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 got to start planning where my money's going to go. Obviously, I just I just stockpiled on a few kits now that I actually had a decent paycheck. Finally, things turning around, as it were. Um, so now I've got to get things back in line. Now I can start planning out different things I need to buy, like the Dragon Zord. I've been needing to buy the the Soul Chigokin Dragon Zord for a while now. It's been out, obviously. Um, it's not really going anywhere, and it's fairly cost effective for what it is. But now that we have the Soul Chigokin Titanus, that's also coming out fairly soon which is more expensive, but I can look into it. And part of me thinks they're just minor remolds and slight retools of the Legacy versions. Because from what, just looking at Titanus, I see no difference between it and the Legacy. And you look at the description, I was like, that sounds exactly like the Legacy. So, buy a new 200 some odd dollar version of the same thing we already own? I don't know. And mini plug kits, I'm looking at those, especially the... Uh, Power Rangers ones, but the Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad ones that have been announced. Oh my god, I have to have those. I have to have those so much. Because I love those things back in the day. I no longer have the figures, which is a shame. So I'm going to have to go get those. I do wish that Super Mini Plus were cheaper. So Bandai, drop the price on Super Mini Plus. Spending time with the missus watching Netflix Sabrina. Cool. Yeah, you guys went to church this morning, and now you're watching a series about witches. High res wing zero has problems involving pre-built frame. If you don't look careful, you'll break something. That's true. Rickgar has a tiny head, so uh, say goodbye to your wallet when MG Dynamics comes out. Why? It's not going to be that expensive. I mean, it's it doesn't come with a lot, so I don't expect that to even be remotely expensive. Maybe seventy. Maybe, if I had to guess. I'm going to guess somewhere in the 55, 5,500 yen, so thereabouts probably in the $60 range, and then it probably gets some markup. Um, I don't expect Dynamics to be expensive at all, to be honest. There's almost nothing to it. Um, yeah, there's new, obviously new panels, new weapons, but compared to like Ignition Mode Exia that comes with so much stuff, so many weapons... Um, yeah, plus they're saving money on having the frame already done. Uh, one one hundred super orbital gun win. Never. Don't worry about that. Never. Never gonna have it. Uh, short of Trunt and Cog and the new Transformers line, I'm going to pass on the Transformers f for next year and spend more money on Gundam, especially MG Dynamics. Cool. Uh, yeah, the Siege line is what it is. I've been looking at it. The uh, reviewers have already started getting them because everybody ordered the, uh, I want to say two-pack. They, they didn't come together, but they ordered Megatron and Optimus at the same time. Everybody's reviewing them all right now. I watched uh, Bolt Matrix's review on uh, Prime. It was pretty cool. His main complaint was the weathering. He doesn't like it. I'd have to see it in person. But seeing Hasbro's digital paint, their digital dot matrix style weathering on a Star Wars figure that's coming up fairly soon. Um, if they're applying that to the Transformers, I don't know if I care, to be honest. I, I'm almost with them on the idea of having them clean. Like, will they put out a clean non-damage version later or not? Or will there be a quote-unquote Takara version? Because there are there, there's some new Takara stuff out now. The... Uh, Golden Pond edition of things. Uh, which their their golden version of Starscream makes no sense because it's not even a Starscream mold. It's just one of the Combiner Wars jets, which is stupid. Anime version camphor robot Damashi. We'll have to do it for now, but Banda, give me a 2.0 MG camphor. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on some of the older UC suits not getting 2.0s. Especially Xeon suits, because a lot of them 
could share the Zeku 2.0 frame, if nothing else, modify it to a degree. Um, but yeah, they've done a whole lot of things on the Fetty side, but not a lot on doing updated versions of Xeon suits. Although I will say the uh, RE100 Jack Dogo does look pretty cool. I had to barely pass on that. <laughs> it's like I was looking at it, I was like, mm, that looks good. And of course, the P Bandai other custom version looks pretty cool as well. It looks like we are getting a re release of the um, uh, the uh, Afrit. We're getting a new, we're getting a re release on the Afrit Schneid, so that's pretty cool. Stardust Memory Gundams need some 2.0s. I agree with you on that. Um, also, a thing that makes no sense that they haven't, re, you know, done again. In fact, those haven't even gotten an updated kit since uh, their RG versions. I mean, even an up updated um, HG Evolution project. Uh, just call it what it is. <laughs> uh they do need that those are some really cool gundams um a new a new updated version of the dendrobium would be great even an hg scale or i don't know reprinting more of them so they cost less actually i want a reprint of the um neo zeong because that just is so big and too hard to freaking find i almost got I, I almost got out of church jerk but failed i haven't played the heck out of cod black ops 4 need to play red dead 2 also need to review a lot of stuff also got to find time to do your nerd calf yes you do because you you've been you've been uh prepped for that for a couple weeks and you're just like i don't have any time stop playing video games for a day uh, i would love to see some dynamics option opinion packs i'm assuming you mean option packs from the OV came out after MG Dynamics comes out like underwater gun, outer space gun. Yes, that would actually be cool. The the uh, I guess that's the suborbital one, the giant thing. Um, I expect that to be done by third parties, to be honest. Um, but I doubt that they'll bother. Uh, the Optimus looks cool, though. I'm not a fan of the truck mode. I'm gonna try adding some weathering stuff. Yeah, see, that's that's the way I would look at it. If there's a good way to strip off the paint without ruining the plastic. Which might be able to do. He was talking about using acetone to take it off. I'm like, some maybe some very diluted acetone. I'd be worried about melting the plastic, just depending on what it is. Um, I would try alcohol first and see what happens with that. But yeah, no weathering. It's weathering it yourself would definitely be fun. I'm not. I'm not offended by the truck mode. I'm more offended by the size, considering what they cost for a Voyager class. They are small. They're going back and redesigning the the size classes. But the details are there. The prime... The, okay, I'll say this. Just from watching the reviews and checking out, the worst... There are two bad offenses, in my opinion, for the new version of Prime. That's the forearm flaps that they seem to have just forgotten how to get rid of. And the huge back flap and then the gap behind it. They, didn't, they need to fix that backpack. Uh, but those are the only two things I would really fix about that Prime. It looks actually very good. Megatron, I haven't watched the reviews on Megatron yet. I'll probably do that later on tonight or tomorrow when I got some downtime. Uh, Megatron looks cool, but I'm really getting tired of tank version of Megatron. And I get that they're not going to give us another gun version just because. But it, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of the H tank and stuff like that. I want to see something different done with Megatron. Uh, Free Schneid's pre-orders have started a little bit ago. I know, but I just now saw them on the websites that I use. Uh, now for Gunpla, how do you feel that kits are showing up in GameStops and Barnes and Nobles? They've been in Barnes and Nobles for a long time, Art. Um, you just now have seen them. <laughs> Actually, I've bought the. Uh, I didn't buy a Gundam kit, but I bought um, one of the uh, Pacific Rim kits, uh, specifically from there. Actually, I think I bought a Star Wars kit. No, they've they've carried uh, Kotobukiya and. Bandai kits for a while, maybe not Kotobukiya kits, but they have the Star Wars models or statues of those, so those are there. Uh, they're indeed small, but they're fantastic. Okay, hey, Rodimus 13's here now. Thoughts on an expert cob being G-Reco? I don't need it. <laughs> I know it won, but I've I've never I've never needed an MG version of the of the G self. I've always, I've never liked G Reco, but hey, that's my opinion. There are people who love, obviously one for a reason. People love G Reco. The G Self has an interesting design, but it's not for me. Never was. I couldn't even watch the series. Um, 
Oh, uh, but uh, as for uh, Gundam kits being GameStop, the prices are a little high, and they're not carrying them in the store. You generally, ha- or at least locally here, they're not carrying them. They're just, you have to pre-order them. And if you don't pre-order them, you don't get them. That's the one thing I really hate. I was like, okay, so wait, you only had, they only put in the stock for what gets ordered. They d- now, I don't mean on the store level. I mean you know, globally, distribution-wise. So if something comes out, and then I see it, and I'm like, hey, can I go ahead and order this? They can't, because that was it. Um, that's the only thing I really hate about that. And it doesn't make any sense for GameStop to pull that, because almost anything else you could put in an order for, except for Gunpla. But I like the availability of them being in GameStops, and if I needed to, I could definitely do it now. I do know that they had the GameStop exclusive Orange Clear Haro kits. I didn't bother getting that, um... But uh, my friend who does work at GameStop was showing it off on, on her Facebook, and I'm like, I'm glad I don't need that. Now, the um, the uh, Haro, what is it called? The Mechanics, whatever version, the bigger Haro, I'm going to pick that up as soon as I can, because that thing's cool. Uh, I love the B2 Bomber alt mode for Megatron. I actually do that, too, actually. I don't... If they could make it work with a G1 aesthetic for Megatron, I'd be down for that, not that other version of Megatron. I would love to see Raiden, or is it Raiden, get a reissue, or finally get brought into the modern Transformers world as the Autobots only six com- six team combiner. Oh, okay, I got you. And Devastator True Nemesis from the Diaclone line. I don't know that one offhand. Most popular Bandai products have to be ordered. Yeah, that sucks. That's weird. Because I've seen many Barnes & Noble, but I guess you have to have that influence, so to speak. But, um... I don't think all Barnes and Nobles carry like all the nerd stuff. Like they're not going to have the Harry Potter section. They're not going to have a buttload of pops and things like that. So it, it it's up to you guys to kind of ask them. I would think one thing I would love to see is Gundam kits at Hobby Lobbies because they have a big selection um, of other things, even the Bandai Star Wars kits, but not Gundam. And I think somebody somewhere told me that they found a Hobby Lobby that did carry Gundam kits, but that that would be one thing I would love to see. And uh, technically, the Orange Taro is based off Lock On Taro, so it's a double O kit unless you have to get it. No, I don't. Its packaging doesn't say double O on it anyway. I don't have to get it. Actually, the fact they didn't do. I almost said something dumb. Uh, but they should have tied those in a little bit. But Haro isn't specifically from Double O, so it, you can't really claim that. And Trains Toys sell well. I don't know if it was where I lived or not, but when I was young, but when I was younger, it was hard for me to find all three of Team Bullet Train from 2000 Car Robots. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got you. Also, Southern Georgia, so what can I expect? I don't know. I don't know what you can expect. Raiden only appeared in G1 Transformers during Headmasters here in Japan. In Japan. Where did I get here? Let me look it up. I'm going to look it up real quick. Oh, okay. It was all trains. Gotcha. I mean, they did have the, uh, obviously they had the train combiners later. But it almost looks like something from Tokyuger. That's funny. But yeah, I could definitely see why. Because trains aren't that big of a thing here. And I've never understood that. Like, a lot of the train formers, like, obviously we never would have had Power Rangers, train rangers, so to speak. We would never have gotten a Tokyo's version because they, we just don't care about trains over here. Shut up. 
Uh, Orange Horror Spectrum calls it shooting horror. Yeah, they've used shooting as a thing in a lot of things. MG here do parts to make Hazel Raw was fun to build. Yeah, I've been looking at every one of those too, but the only one uh, I want the white one, but they don't. Almost nobody has that in stock, so I'll have to buy the other one. So it'll go on my advanced. And I'm surrounded by two Hobby Lobbies, so that would be sweet to see Gunplay at Hobby Lobby. You're surrounded by them. How the heck do you get surrounded by Hobby Lobbies? I assume that you mean there's one on either side of you. <laughs> Why would there need to be so many Hobby Lobbies? Have you ever tried using the custom grays in your profile pic for a shirt design? Because that would be cool. Uh, I didn't do it as a shirt design, but it has been done as a sticker and a poster. Um... It probably needs an update. I need to get with uh, Ryan Liu about that because he's the one who did it. And actually, that's how we met. Um, and he actually did design that. You can't actually buy the stickers at the Shoki store. Um, but a, a redesign for that, maybe some line art or something like that, would be pretty cool for a t-shirt design. Um, it just comes down to knowing whether or not it's going to sell. Because even if I have decent t-shirt designs, they haven't always sold. I've kind of brought up the lacking t-shirt sales before. Um, actually, the uh, I was reminded not before I started this, I was looking at comments, and somebody commenting about having a Master Grade Monday shirt. That would be kind of cool. I just don't know what it would be. So I'd have to look into that. Um, also, I was thinking about going ahead and doing the hashtag nub shaming shirt, but I don't know if that's actually a little too mean. But actually, I like the design that... Uh, that uh, Thomas made for me on that one. So that's why I've actually put it in a couple of extra videos lately. So uh, look out for that. It's like, mm. By the way, uh, nobody answered my question from that video. Uh, so nobody gets the points until they do. That's funny. Um, oddly enough, I'm surrounded by Kroger. Or Kroger's, as we say here. Uh, there's literally one... There There used to be... There used to be three Kroger's in three directions. One to the north, one to the west, one to the south. And then there was a crappy HEB, but there was none to the east. Now they, built, they closed down two of the older Kroger's. Now there's only two. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. They built a brand new one. They, they built a brand new Hyper Mega fucking Kroger. Uh, right down the corner, which sells toys, which is awesome. An actual legit toy aisle, which is where I found some things. Uh, I'm still looking for like the last grocery gang figure that I don't have from this current wave. Yeah, I heard about that. It makes no sense. Chris Fernandez, hello. Hello, Chris. We're going to go ahead and talk like this. Oh, hey. I just now noticed I actually have a live counter down here in the bottom corner on OBS. Though that's probably not um, highly... Actually, no, that's it's only off by a couple minutes, so that's pretty good. Because um, obviously I, I start streaming, quote-unquote, from OBS before I stream from YouTube because it has to be receiving signal. Um, so that's actually... I never noticed that until just now. It has an hour and five. Kroger Supermarket sells a big amount of toys. It really does. Uh... Amy Wilson. The hell was that all about? What? I don't even know what that was all about. I thought Amy Wilson was part of my Lupus for Lupus contest. That doesn't make sense. Also, why would you... <laughs> yeah, no relation. Yeah, I gotta love somebody who's just popping in to just be an ass. Makes no sense. Unless I know that person. And yeah, actually, I remember, 
Because I know, Andy, obviously you were involved in the contest, but I remember an Amy at some point, so I don't even understand what that was. That made no sense. Also, why would you subscribe then be a dick? That makes no sense. I subscribe. I don't like you, so I'm unsubscribing. Okay, now you sound like somebody I know. And that's what happens. Ratchet's on leader class broke. Oh, Cybertron Optimus. Gotcha. Cybertron. Cybertron. I always get the... Uh, Unicron Trilogy confused, to be honest. I don't remember the order of things. <laughs> I, I don't think I watched that much Armada. I'm pretty sure I watched a good chunk of Cybertron. But the other ones I don't really recall. Uh, see if you can get some replacement uh, ratchets. Um, there's usually a lot of third-party guys who will sell updated ratchets and stuff like that. Because um, I know they did that for a lot of the Combiner Wars ones where they actually would replace the entire thing. If you could have only one Gundam turned into a PG, what would it be? For me, it would be the GPO-2A. If you could only collect Gumpa of any grade or one Gundam, which one would you like? But that's a silly question because I would never do just the one. Um, and I was doing only one grade until I got smart. Uh, I was building only Master Grades in the beginning until I ran out of things to build because of availability, and that's when I got into uh, HGs with double O. Um, and only have one Gundam turned into a PG. I don't know. Uh, as we brought up the other day... Um, I think that the O Gundam would be cool as a PG based off of the PG Exia. That should have been the next PG, not the Seven Swords. The Seven Swords is a waste. I don't, I don't, don't get it. It makes no sense. But I'm not. In, oh, a PG victory too. Wow. I mean, to each their own. We've we've seen how the victory two does in its MG form. Well, you probably blame Kotoki for that. Um, anyways. <laughs> but now, uh, that's, I think Old Gundam would be great as a PG, to be honest. I think it would be simple and fun. And if you could actually have some kind of effects parts for the uh, GN particle wings, that'd be great. A PG meteor. Yeah. <laughs> you know how big that would be for obvious reasons PG Junior MS PG Quanta yeah I mean a PG Quanta wouldn't be a stretch I mean it's just using the uh, Exia frame you know and then adding in a few extra bits no big deal on that one uh, honestly I was confused that that wasn't the next one if they were falling in line that way Perfect grades are obviously going to all be a little bit iffy. I was honestly surprised they went with another double O, even though it's still technically double O season. Um, I'm calling it season just because that's that's the way the year has been. But things that just don't have a PG. I don't want a PG unicorn. No, I'm just kidding. Um, PG Sananju would be great, but it would be enormous. There's a 160th victory, too. Just not a PG. True. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking at things. I want to see a PG impulse with sword strike packs so you can act Shin defeating Kira and pissing off Jesus Yamato fans. Sure. PG Barbatos. Yeah, everybody wants PG Barbatos. But then you would have to like include every version of it as add-on kits. So we just keep changing it out. 
I'm be surprised PG Phoenix gets new parts to be an ENT. I will absolutely not be surprised for that. Um, but PG, PG, Sinanju, I get that it would be massive and expensive, but hello. Look at some of the special edition ones we got. Like the 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven PGs were stupid expensive. It's a small mobile suit. There we go. Okay, that makes sense. Sorry. I wasn't reading that. Let's go with PG Crossbone. Let's get let's get them PG Crossbones. Mm-hmm. More Crossbone. More Crossbone. Where's my Crossbone anime? I'll tell you where it is. Nowhere. Duh. It never happened. Okay. Well, guys, I don't want to go too much longer. We did answer all the questions. So if you got anything else you want to go ahead and bring up and talk about, by all means, I'll give you a couple more minutes. I do have to go. I can't stay on too long because new Doctor Who in less than an hour. There's not enough crossbones. Um, MG Crossbones Zero or X Zero. That'd be cool. I know they did the HG for sure. I nearly bought it. More macaroni, less cheese. I don't understand that concept, and why did that? Wow, there's a there was a delay there. It popped up over in the OBS before it popped up over here. I watched IBO, but I couldn't like it or most of the model because I feel like IBO is a generic mac anime with Gundam slapped on its name, in my opinion. Meh. You can feel that way if you want to. That's fine. But then again, uh, so was G Gundam. <laughs> it's like G Gundam was created to be what it is, and then they just said, eh, let's market it as a Gundam series and see if people like it better. I would be I would feel better if it had nothing to do with Gundam entirely. Didn't the X three come out like two years ago or something similar to HG? I think we should get or we get we could get an X Zero soon. Yeah, the X three, X twos all came out like last year in the last two years. I do want to get an X two. I love the design of the X two. But the only one I've seen in the last year or so was the X two Kai that I'm not actually that big of a fan of. I want the regular X2 if there is such a thing. I just dig the color scheme. Uh, why are there no MGIBO kits? Uh, because they did the full mechanics line and that is about as close as you're ever going to get. Unless they had won the Verkal argument, which they didn't, sadly. Um, because the 100 kits for IBO work so good, they didn't need an MG. In fact, that was their out for not having to create MGs. And I think they were going for that for the most part. It's not like they're bad. They're really not. The engineering is fine. The full frames are great. They're not cheaply done. Not really. Not like an RE where they skip a lot of things and you're basically building a big HG kit. In fact, look at the IBO HG kits for the most part. If it's a main series suit, it's developed well. I mean, you're talking about full inner frames for HG kits. That's just unheard of. I hate G Gundam. That's my opinion of it. I dislike everything about it. I think it's stupid. I don't really like the designs of any of the suits for the most part. I think that the concept is actually fairly dumb. And um, I could not watch more than six episodes, which is more than I could say about G Reco. So I guess there's that. I gave it a lot more time. Now, had I seen G Gundam as a kid when it came out, I probably would have liked it. I would have liked the ideas that were there. Trying to watch it after watching real Gundam stories, it's not there. But realistically, that was probably designed to be a just mecha fighter series, and they'd decided to market it as a Gundam series to make it more palatable rather than jumping out and doing something brand new. And then tying it in at the end with Wing just to say, hey, we've got a new upcoming Gundam series, here you go. It's almost like Kamen Rider, where they sort of tease the next Kamen Rider near the end of the series. Usually. <laughs> it's one of the weakest. It's still weak anywhere it is. But it has massive fanboys. Uh, yeah, IBO, um, MG IBOs will maybe bring more color separation. Maybe. Uh, the, the ones I've built don't really have that problem, to be honest. 
Uh, did you never get into Super Robot Wars? Nope. But I mean, it's the same same idea. I know what it is. I just I never saw it. I mean, it's not like I'm against mechas and against big fighting robots. Obviously, I like Power Rangers and I like any series usually where they're fighting with big robots. Uh, several of them have been kind of boring to me, so I kind of checked out on them. Um, but I like most of them. I just to to look at the rest of Gundam as a whole. G Gundam makes no sense. G Reco is still based on a normal idea of a Gundam show. Uh, build divers, build fighters, any of those things along those lines are based off of the reality that Gundam is a thing in their universe and they have the Gundam kits. So that's a whole thing in and of itself. G Gundam stands out entirely on its own and doesn't work. I don't like it. Still dumb. But yeah, but the thing is, they can call it an A. They made it an AU series back then, but then retcon it, of course, with um, turn A. So it technically happened. The old G units get a re- get a revive. Yeah, something better. I mean, at least they reprinted them for people who did want them. Uh, but I'm just absolutely not interested in those. I've never wanted to build them, whether they were a kid or not. I know nothing of it. I don't like to build... I don't like building kits of a series or a show or whatever that I have no concept of what it is. I like to have some kind of investment of attachment to the thing. Um, Like, say, before I build Moon Gundam, I'm going to take a look at the manga or at least what there is out there on it so I at least have any clue about it other than the obvious tie-in to Sazabi and stuff like that. Um, same thing for any of the NT kits. I haven't bought any of them yet. I mean, they're not really all available yet, but um, I need to. I want to see a bit more of the series before I buy the kits. Which, of course, we have to wait a little bit longer for, for the first episode of NT to come out. Episode. Um... But being that it's based off of, an, or is as a continuation kind of, of Unicorn, I'm down with that. g with Star Trek weaponry. Uh, I really wish Russia Sentai would have an American version. Love the idea behind the series and Super Sentai series. I've watched, I've loved trains since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, no, the idea of the trains, other than something like Thomas the Tank Engine, never really took off over here. Dino Thunder was the last one. Dino Thunder. Oh, okay, yeah. Had to think back how far back that was. A uh, legit Power Ranger series I haven't actually watched in a long time. And I started watching um, Uchu, Uchu Sentai Q Ranger, which I was having a lot of fun with. And I know there will never be an American version of that. But I would not mind getting uh, the Kureno and all the... Uh, or Kureno. I gotta say that right. And then all associated Zords for that. Because that toy, the gimmick line, was actually really fun for the Qtamas and stuff like that. Um, and man, did that series have a ton of Rangers. It's not a one-shot movie, dude. They're doing it just like Unicorn. It's going to be several episodes broken into movie form. For us to ever have an MGG Gundam t- to have... Any MG 2.0 treatment. Yeah, uh, I don't see them ever doing an updated version of any of those kits. With the exception of if it goes to a Verkov vote. Which is why we're getting G-Reco. Or rather, G-Self. Which, assuming they don't give us all the packs along with it. Um... Sorry, a bunch of notifications I had to reply to real quick. Um, but no, the the I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if the G Gundam kits got just an update so they weren't the way they are. Um, though, uh, say like the HG versions are actually pretty cool because obviously I have the Nobel, which you know is fine, other than being a little too dainty. Like it's super fine. You got to be super careful with those joints. It is a tiny, tiny, tiny girl. But a very cool kit. Wouldn't mind seeing more things based off Nobel. Um, actually, Nobel MG would be fun. Have you seen the anime Shinka Lion that ties into the Takara Tomi 
Plow rail bullet trains a turn into robot fighting monsters attack Japan. No, would be the answer to that. <laughs> Very simple answer. No. Uh, GG gun kits can hold some posters. Regular MG can't hold. I'll give them that, but it's all I can give the kits. I just I don't like the look of them, and their the proportions are so strange. And I get that the G Gundam Gundams, I use the term lately, uh, were really weirdly designed in the first place. Not to mention we didn't get hardly any of them. If we're honest. And of course everybody wants a tequila Gundam. And I know everybody wants a version of the tequila Gundam from Build Divers. I think we would have seen that announced by now. To be honest. But they've been doing some pretty sneaky stuff with Build Divers. So maybe in the future P Bandai version of that. Because that would be fun. But. Alright guys. For now I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. Because well, it's 617. At least where I am. Uh, thanks for everybody for coming out, hanging out, and talking. It's been a lot of fun, with the exception of Amy Wilson. I don't know what your problem is. Um, but, uh, yay. Fun times. I'll be doing another discussion video sometime this week. Uh, probably on a Tuesday or Thursday. I'll just I'll post that separately from the regular review that's going to be up. Uh, so that we can do another discussion next Sunday, hopefully. And, of course, uh, right after this, the new Nerdcast 101 will be up with Joey Ganoda. I am looking for more guests on to be on that. I'm not just going to take anybody, but um, hopefully uh, Rodimus13 will be on, hopefully, uh, very soon. I think we're planning that out for next weekend. Oh, that'll be interesting, because uh, I think we're planning that for next Sunday. Uh, uh, hopefully, Unboxing Hour will be on very soon. Uh, the one with my buddy Eric. I'm going to be editing that this week to hopefully come out next weekend. Also, guys, if you are local, if you are going to be at the Hobbytown Grand Prix on the 17th, I will get out there as soon as I can, and I will be filming the competition. We'll be filming the kits and hopefully interviewing builders. So if you want to have your stuff display, if you're going to be there, you're going to be displaying out there. I will be hopefully filming that event, if not participating, which still not sure if I'll pull off or not. Um, but that should be a lot of fun and I can't wait to show off the works that people have done, uh, especially of course, some of the guys I know who have entries. I can't wait to see their work. That'll be fun. <laughs> but guys, of course, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe buttons. Go check out, of course, the t-shirts and everything you can see right here. Of course, double October gear is always going to be available go pick up the new stuff also guys uh i encountered this with eric last night he said he had put in an order but on my end i don't see that an order was ever put in so make sure if you order a t-shirt or order any merchandise double check to make sure the order has gone through because usually i'll see it on my end i'll see the transaction even if it hasn't printed yet but i had the same problem when chris tried to order his he Said he put in an order, showed me a thing, but it had never gone through, so he had to put in a new order. Now he didn't get charged for it. So if you've tried to order stuff and it's, you've got a confirmation, double check, make sure it went through, because like I said on my end, I haven't seen hardly anything. So I'm gonna go play Azure Lane now. See you. Bye, Carl. But guys, remember, remember to keep on nerding, keep on building, and let's keep building this community together make sure also if you have any whip wednesday submissions send them to the email hit me up on the facebooks and uh we'll go from there and look forward to the first whip wednesday obviously on wednesday i'll see you guys later